end, which is placed on the main view model. And then I'm also going to use a comment parameter, which is set through an element name binding to the text property of a text box. So that, uh, that's a string. Notice that I don't have a click event here. The command is going to be invoked when the button is clicked. <clears throat> now if I open my view model folder, here I have this say hello command which is declared as a property of type say hello. We will see that class. And then I'm creating this command here. Now I also have a separate class for my command. So here we start having a few troubles because I have an additional class that I need to maintain. And this class here requires actually a reference to the, to the main view model because I'm going to observe through the property change event. And if a property which is named counter changes, I'm going to raise a can execute change event. So I'm going to say when the counter property changes, you should evaluate my can execute method because there is a chance that I'm going to be disabled or enabled. Now, this can execute method is observing the view model and check the counter property. And if I can divide this property by two, I'm going to return true. So I, I enable my command when counter is even. And I disable it when it's odd. And then I have the execute method, which is invoked when you click on the button, which is just going to show a message box. So now if I run this, I have say hello, so I can here enter my name. Okay, that works. And if I increment the counter, I see that my button is disabled. That's automatically through the command. When I enable this, counter changes, my can execute change event is raised, the UI is asking my can execute command, hey, what's your status? Okay, and I will return false. And now I can re-enable it. All right? So that's a super simple implementation, but I still need a separate class to do that, which is too much code, okay? I mean, you know, what's break, what breaks in your application is code, so you want to minimize that, okay? So instead, I'm going to use a component called relay command, and here too, there are multiple implementations of that. The one from the MVVM Lite Toolkit, which I will show in a moment, is called relay command. In Prism, there is delegate command. Uh, they have you know, small differences, but the principle is the same. Relay command was actually developed by Josh Smith, who is a WPF guru and also a, uh, a colleague of mine at Identity Mind. He wrote this book called Advanced MVVM. Uh, this dives quite a lot deeper. So if you're interested, you can check it out. It's pretty good. So now, the XAML didn't change at all. I have exactly the same XAML code. I'm going to go to my say hello command on my view model. What changed, however, is that I don't have this say hello class anymore. Instead, I am using here a relay command which is, in that case, I have two versions, a generic and a non-generic version. The generic version is for when you have a comment parameter. So it's going to cast the parameter directly to the right type for you. You don't have to worry about that. In this case, a string. That's the content of the text box. And then creating the relay command happens here. I have two delegates, which I expressed as lambda expressions. The first one is the execute method. So the parameter is of type string, and I'm going to show my message box, same as before. The second one is the can execute method. So again, I get a parameter. In this case, I'm not using it. I can check my private attribute, counter, and if it can be divided by two, I'm going to return true. This syntax is a little bit confusing because there is no return keyword, but that's how lambda expression do it. I'm actually returning true, okay, or false, depending. Now notice I don't have my annoying reference to my main view model anymore because I'm inside the main view model. I can access my private attributes directly. It is here. And also inside the counter property, every time that it changes, I'm going to call the race can execute change method on the relay command. So I'm going to say, hey, the counter property change, you should reevaluate me. Now if I run this, we will see that 
same result as before. I can go ahead, mix 10, say hello. And I can also disable it the same way as before. So the gain is that I have a lot less code than before. I don't have an additional class to maintain. Now let's talk <coughs> about the messenger. So here for the messenger, I'm going to run the app first. That's now a WPF app. I have two windows. And notice that into this window, the text box shows empty. Now if I send a message from the first window to the second window, it now shows hello, okay? I can also send a message with a callback. That's very convenient in some uh, scenarios where you want to send a message and then there is an asynchronous operation going on and then you want to get a callback. In this case, I'm sending the message with a callback. Notice that the callback button is enabled and I can send a callback back to the, uh, to, to the sender. So how does it work? Well, first of all, let's take a look to the res in the recipient class. So this is a totally standard window in that case, okay? The messenger is actually, doesn't actually have anything to do with MVVM. I can use that in any time, type of application. But in MVVM, it helps you in certain scenarios, okay? So again, no confusion. Messenger really commands that actually helpers. So now, <clears throat> um, when I receive, so I need to register on the default messenger register for a message of type string. And here I don't add tokens or whatever additional constraints, so I just say every time that a message of type string is broadcasted to everybody, please pass it to me. And then this delegate is going to be executed, I get the message of type string, and I can go ahead and set the text property of the text box. For the callback, it's just a little bit more complicated because I'm going to use a message type which is built in the MVVM Lite Toolkit, which is called Notification Message Action. So that's basically just a message with callback. So here, the message is now of type Notification Message Action. I can set the text property to m.notification, which is a string, and then I will save the message for later. And then I enable the callback button, which when it's clicked, it's going to go ahead and execute the callback. So I'm going to send a message back to the, uh, to the recipient, to the sender, sorry. Now, to send the message, let's go in the main window now. If I send a string, that's one line of code. I'm going to call messenger.default.send, and then you can send anything you want. Okay, simple values, integer, booleans, strings or complex objects, for example, the selected item in a list, for example. For the callback message, it's just a little bit more complicated. I'm creating, this time, a new notification message action. The notification is set to hello, call me back, and I give a delegate for the callback. And the callback, I could also express that as a, as a lambda expression if I wanted. In this case, I'm creating a separate method with a message of type string and this string is actually the type which is declared here, okay? So here again, the callback can be anything. So that's the implementation. Now let me show you a fun little application which I did. So that's an MVVM app. Uh, each window has a view model, and the view model communicate together so that every time the position changes, the position of the other window changes too. And I can actually even resize the windows, okay? Also a cool thing is that I can undock them for a while, so now they are undocked. But if I want, I can go ahead and dock them again, and now they are docked again. If I close one, the other one will close too. Every interaction between those two windows